Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I make videos about teaching and research and read the Charlotte Danielson framework for teaching rubrics so that you don't have to. And in today's video, I'm really excited to share with you six tips to help you prepare for your first announced observation of the year. Whether you're a first year teacher or this is your 10th year of teaching, these tips and tricks will apply to all. All right, so let's just get right into it. The first tip I have for you is to keep your desk and your room clean, especially if your observer or your administrator plans on sitting in your desk. They're gonna be kind of looking around to see, you know, how you've organized the space. And the last thing you want is for them to be sitting at your desk and see like coffee stains or your papers are disorganized, your pens are all over the place. Make sure um, that you prepare that space if possible. I know sometimes if you share your room with other teachers, that can be hard. But if that's the case, I would message the teachers who's in there the period before you and ask if it's okay. Um, let them know that you're being observed and they will more than likely be willing to work with you. Um, because of timing issues like that, it might be wise for you to schedule your observation either before a lunch period, right first thing in the morning so that you can set up the room in the morning or just make sure that you're setting it up um, in, in at a time where nobody else is using that room the period prior if possible so that you have time to make sure that all the desks are clean your desk is organized um, to that point also make sure that there is work up on the walls the walls are nicely decorated but not necessarily chaotic just that there are posters or something on the walls for them to look at. Um, you don't want your walls to be too bare for sure. So that's my first tip is tidiness and make sure that it's also nicely decorated. The second thing that you can do as a precautionary measure, as a precautionary measure um, is to actually rehearse your plan with the kids prior. It's okay to let your students know that someone's coming in and let's say that you have a Socratic circle planned or a debate planned, something very interactive. It will actually ease the children if you take the time a period or two before to practice with the students so that you can kind of work out the kinks beforehand. Um, when an administrator comes into the room, the worst thing that can happen is that your kids start to feel nervous. So reassure them that they're not here to judge them, but to help them. And something that I'm really big on is making sure that my students feel comfortable around adults and talking to adults. So if your administrator comes in to observe and starts walking around the room and speaking to your kids, your kids should be prepared to answer back. If your administrator asks the kids or comes up behind um, a, a table and says, you know, what are you working on? Your students should never reply, oh, I don't know, or oh, I don't know. They should have a response ready so, you know, practice that with them. Ask them, okay, Sally, what are we working on? And have them have a scripted response ready. It's also okay to let them know that they can say hello and welcome a new adult into a class. A lot of times students see an adult that they don't know walk into the room with a suit on and they just, it's just commonplace to pretend that that person is not there. Um, but I let my kids get into the habit of saying good morning or good afternoon to a visitor in our classroom um, and get into the habit of also having conversation about their work with adults, even if they're not sure who they are. Okay, my third tip, and this is a really important one. If you're able to stand in front of the door to greet your students as they come in. It will show number one, that your lesson is prepared and you're not using that time to scramble and you're, you're more relaxed. It shows number two, that you have rapport with your students, which is one of the things they'll be looking for on the Danielson rubric. Same thing when, when they're about to leave, stand by the door and say goodbye to them on the way out. Tell them, have a good weekend, have a good day. Those little tweaks make a big difference in your Danielson score because it shows that you were prepared enough to spend that time actually with your kids in the morning um, or prior to the class period starting and right when the class is ending. And developing a nice cl classroom culture and rapport 
um, is gonna be an easy thing for them to check off and something you can prepare, be prepared to say in your post observation where you think you did well. All right. Um, the next piece of advice that I have is to choose a lesson that is going to actually be entertaining. Keep in mind that your administrators have to do these every year, multiple times a year. They've seen it all and there's a good chance that they might be bored. So you want to pick something that's not going to be boring for them to watch. Um, Pick something that's interactive, fun. You can do something that's gamifying, um, have a little media or video clip ready. It You want to essentially pick the best lesson of your life. And this doesn't necessarily mean that every class is going to be this way. Administrators understand that. But just like a colorful resume will stand out in a big stack, a colorful lesson that, you know, is exciting, um, or even, you know, can incorporate and have the administrator interact with is something that they will remember when they're they're doing their scores. Okay. Um, the next piece of advice that I have for you is to plan out in advance the segments on the Danielson rubric or whatever rubric that your school uses that you want to excel in in advance. So for example, if you want to score a four in, you know, um, classroom culture, make sure that you have your evidence ready even before the lesson starts or even before your pre-observation so that when it's time to go into your conference meeting, you're saying, okay, I think I scored a four on areas 4A, uh, 4C, 1B, and here's why. This makes your life easier and guides, you know, your your planning easierly and also makes the admin's life easier because they're kind of just either going to agree or disagree with you and write that down right away. It also shows that you took the time to actually plan in advance what you were working on instead of letting them be the ones give you items to work on. You can say, this is, this is part of the rubric that I was really trying to focus on and it could only be one or two things. It could be, you know, what you put in your PDP at the beginning of the year for your goals. And these are all in all my top tips. Number one, keep your room tidy, clean, and also decorated. Rehearse with your students in advance. Um, and also, in addition to rehearsing the lesson, rehearse how they might respond to questions like, what are you working on? What does this mean? Even, you know, get them into the habit of greeting and welcoming. The administrators are not used to students actually acknowledging them when they walk in the door and saying good morning. That's, that's a big deal. Um, number three, if you can stand outside your door at the beginning of class and at the end, make an effort to do that. I know if you teach in multiple rooms, that can be challenging as well. And I've been in that situation myself. So I make sure that if it's hard, if sometimes I'm getting there at the same time as my students, if I'm in different buildings or different classrooms, I'll choose to do it at the end instead of at the beginning. Take what you can get. Try to pick a lesson that is entertaining. Try to be entertaining so that your lesson stands out to them and so that your administrator has fun watching you. And um, finally, make sure that you're planning out the segments of the rubric that you specifically are goal setting to score a four on or whatever you know the scoring metrics are for your rubric have that laid down in advance and if they decide that you scored four in other areas as well beautiful but it looks good for you to have a goal set in mind in advance for yourself on that rubric i hope these tips were helpful um, i will see you guys in the next video have a great day